The time has finally arrived. It's my 2023 What's in the Bag. Let's get into it. Welcome back to Tour Truck Tuesday. It is the much anticipated 2023 What's in the Bag. Same location, different year. This is my man cave. Behind these cupboards are some of the clubs that I've tested and used over a period of time. There's good reason for the delay on this because there's been some massive changes. So be sure to hit subscribe and hit notify. Watch all the videos on my channel as to how you can get the best golf clubs for your game. But hopefully from looking at my set, you can learn a few things that will make your choices easier. So let's start with the main culprit, the golf bag. I'm switching to a brand new one. This is the tailor-made vessel, easy to carry, not too heavy for the golf courses I play. In here, there are some tools that I want to talk about before we even get going. These clubs have been a fantastic servant. This will be officially the last video I make with these. My MCs from the previous year and the Project X IOs. Great set of golf clubs, serve me proud, but as you will have seen from my visit to KBS, I'm gonna bang the link up to that video there. I can confirm with good reason and with good testing. That is the key takeaway here for if you make such a dramatic change when it comes to your iron shafts. So many of your golf clubs are your irons. So don't go diving in on these changes. Go through that process have a look at it, and when you come away from it, if you're fortunate like me, you test them properly and you keep the data. I know from the data that I track that there has been no drop-off in the change of proximity to the hole on strokes gained approach. I'm keeping data all the way through this because why would you make a change unless it's validated by the data? Why would you guess when you can measure? Key, key piece takeaway. The original Rocket Balls with an Aldila DVS 70X has traveled with me around the world. And the reason is because this is my calibration. This is my North Star when it comes to golf equipment. Revolutionary for its time because it had the speed pocket in there at the front. It dropped the spin massively on fairway woods, but it gave me a jump up in yardage for flight. It gave me spin control. I could cut it and hold it up and I could hit absolute nuke rakers with it when I needed to. So I keep hold of this golf club and it makes this video for the simple reason that is swing weight. This is the Northern Star for me when it comes to getting the balance point of the rest of my set. I use this for lie angle when it comes to looking at how the golf clubs sit. So when I place this in a Dela Cruz, which I've done on tour videos I've put out there, I'm looking for the angles at the way this golf club sits because I like it for me. I'm also looking for face angle and how this club performs when I place it down. It's been an absolute belter. Where will we go from there? Well, I think another fantastic start point for the transition. Look at how far things have come on. This was one of the clubs, it's always difficult when it comes to getting into new golf clubs, the fairway wood. This was demonstrated, Wyndham Clark used it at the US Open with the victory he just had. It's a stealth two fairway wood. I've bent this one down on the tour truck. You can still see, this is how new it is. It's still got the marker for COR testing, coefficiency of restitution, how quick that ball comes off the blade. But you can see here now, there's a few marks coming into the sole, a few scratches. This has been brilliant. Bent the lie angle, got the face angle how I wanted it. Swing weight matched up to that North Star that I've got. When I place it down, it has a larger footprint than the Stealth 2 Plus. So when you look at fairway woods, this is a decision you need to make. Jason Day used to do this with us on tour. A large sole is what he would like in the fairway wood. I too like the large sole. It's not an easy shot to hit. You want it to do such a variety of yardages. Your three wood, especially for me, which we're gonna cover as we get into the irons, I absolutely have to have it cover a wide, wide range of yardages. And you can see this on my Arcos tool. Why would you be guessing what you can measure? Fairway wood covers over 20 yards in yardage on the numbers of the smart range that I have in. It covers a distance. It gives me a 280 
as my average. But if you go to smart range, which our coast will track for you, it's 267 to 288. Obviously, you can go in there and see how the club performs against strokes gained. This has come back now from a while back because our coast tracks your data from a while before. But you can see that strokes gained, this club has been extremely useful. Other features here, it's got the Velo Core, the Ventus Blue 7X. It's not the TR. Took some time to get into this club. This is July and I've only just truly settled, which is slow, but I've been doing a lot of videos, a lot of product reviews. The TR for me was a little bit stiff. This is the original Ventus Blue. It's tipped. I think I went inch and three quarters. So tipping is when we tip trim the golf shaft in order to get it to play to a certain spin rate. Driver, usually, although I don't, I'll come to that as well. Standard, if there is such a thing, is one inch tip cut. Fairway wood would be inch and a half. This one is, I wanted it to be quite spinny. I wanted it to play quite firm so I could hit that 288 Nuki one and I could hold it up. So I actually went inch and three quarters on this. Then it's a Golf Pride Tour Velvet 58. The benchmark, that's a Tor Velvet, old now and waxy. This is a Tor Velvet 58 round. And there's the first thing you'll notice in my set as we look at the group as a whole. The driver and the three wood are rounds and the rest of the set are actually ridges other than when you get down into the two most lofted wedges. Look at that wedge fitting video that I did over at KBS. That'll answer some of the questions on what you look for in a wedge for setup. But for me, I go round on a 56 and round on a 60. Look at my smart yardages. I'm picking the gaps for the golf courses that I play at quite a bit. Driver-wise, round grip. Okay, why? On tour, I saw it with a couple of players that I would work with that they would use round on the woods. Why was that? I think it was because playing around with face angle, how those paint lines would look between crown and leading edge and wanting it to sit. The round just didn't interfere. For me, when I go with the round grip, I put the logo down the back and I'm one tape still. And I've been on these grips forever. Very particular about when I put them on and getting the length right. They have to all come out, for me, exactly the same length. I don't want any discrepancy between length when it comes to putting those grips on and how they're stretched. They need to be bang on, perfect for that. Because if they're not, it gives you a different width. And the grip is your connection point with the club, so they must be spot on. Driver and three wood is the Seamus Golf head cover. This is Stealth 2 Plus. What tweaks have I done into the head here? Well, you can see yourself, it's a 19 gram at the back. I've got the eight up there, and there is a slight squeeze of hot melt in the toe section. I like to hold and play a peel fade, just keep the face more open. My bad shot, my miss, if anything, is face close to path, which as we all know from watching these videos now and growing together on a track man or a launch monitor device, that's going to give you miss left. So anything I can do, certainly at speed, and I live about 165, I can crank it up as you've seen in some videos, quicker on ball speed, but I live there. Why do I pick this head? I think this is a good point to talk about the golf ball. I play TP5X, doesn't spin as much as the TP5. I create a lot of spin. Again, you guys have watched me hit it. Swing-wise, quite narrow, work with Pro Sender to try and gain a bit more width. Width will get the club coming down a little bit shallower. But the reason I always go into the lower spinning head is because the miss for me is squeezy and spinny. So lower spinning head with weight at the front by putting the heavier weight there pulls the CG forward, which pulls the spin down, which in turn is the first reason why I play the TP5X and not the TP5 because obviously I don't want it to be floaty. So it's hitting my numbers. Look at that Arcos, the data of the range. It's big yardage gains. Driving has been one of the best parts of my game since I've been involved with tour trucks and fitting golf clubs. It's been a gem. TZ6, Acra, M5. M5 is the flex. I know this is tip. Inch and a half again, just playing a bit firmer. There's part of the reason I've got it between standard and lower. So that ties into why there is a round grip on there because I adjusted. The Acra logo decal doesn't quite sit perfectly down the middle. Again, another reason, another call out. If you owned a Stealth and you're gonna get a Stealth too, you might need a different setting in the shaft. Even I got it wrong, pre-glued it, 
and then had to redo the grip, obviously with it being around, no problem, but the graphics move when you change the wrench setting. So I didn't want to not have graphics directly down the back. So when I set up to this, I don't want to see any of the decal from Acra. I want to look down from the player's view and just see clean. Another reason I probably like this shaft, I've got to have used this for six or seven seasons. I've had different lengths. This year, I'm playing 45.75. USGA ruler goes from the center of the blade to the butt end of the golf club, okay? This is the longest Acra build I've played. Why did you go longer? I went longer by quarter inch versus last year's one, which is in that cupboard. And the reason I went longer, I think, is because the different black finish to me, just lengthwise when I put it down, just felt really short. I changed the lie angle. This sleeve is not as flat as the previous year. The previous sleeve for me, I had very flat, so the toe would have been far away from my face. Remember I touched four, I don't want to miss left by having it extremely flat, getting it in standard is as flat as you can go. I've moved one away from that, but the body of this head and the score lines are not as bright, so I don't need as much of a flatter sleeve, because the first, the first sleeve I went sleeve for sleeve was too flat. So again, I adjusted, I adjusted, I tweaked, hence why the what's in the bag video when I bring it to you, it has to be mint. It has to be spot on. Something that I spotted on my Arcos numbers. Three iron, 770. Been in the bag a long time. You can see that the range, it doesn't give me as much. And I pulled it out because it gets a spot in this video for a reason. I hardly use it. But this is my actually stealth plus. Shows you that I haven't updated it. But look at the distance range this rescue can give me. Now this is in standard loft. It's a hazardous red. I even had to look at that myself. 6.585, so it's a bit softer, inspired by a buddy of mine. I know I tipped it half an inch. I lengthwise, I went off longer than, as you can see, the three iron, just because you've got more to play with. But I might test this golf club again. Hence why it's made the watts in the bag. I test it out of the range every now and again and I hit it great. But look at the differences it can give me in yardages. And it's important because you have that three iron, three wood, or that I play quite a weak three wood. I think the actual loft on that is about 15, which nowadays is a bit weak. But if you look at that and then compare it to that three H on the Arcos and then go down to the three I, which is obviously this then you see a big difference in yardage discrepancy. So something I'm looking at for the golf courses I play, it works. I absolutely love this golf club. This three iron in 770, just with the larger top line, it launches higher. When I then pair it with this, which is the X golf ball, I can get the launch and the spin that I need in order to hit and hold a green. If I didn't get the launch out of this and I play it at 21, which will be quite weak, that's the loft on the blade, I play it quite weak because this speed pocket takes the spin off for me and because I deliver the club quite efficiently, I don't want it to just go like a missile. So actually seeing on Arcos that shorter distance, I'm comfortable with, but I do need to be aware of it should I play a golf course where I leave myself with a large gap between three wood and three iron, then that three hybrid might come in. KBS money tapers. Now, hopefully you've all tuned in. Again, the video's there and seen the process of me getting into these, but they've been excellent. Probably played five to seven rounds of golf for them now. Proximity to the hole, like I mentioned earlier, off a set that I've been using for three, four years has not dropped at all. So when that happens in a, a very quick transition like that, you know you're comfortable. Comfortable enough to the point where I can sit here and honestly make this video and say to you now, these money tapers are in, without doubt. I like the feel, I like the flight. If anything, I can hold them up a little easier. They would be a little bit more nuky for me. So again, wanting for a better term than that, but we're all real out here. They would maybe, were tougher for me to just add a bit of spin on, which I know is something that you can't really do, but holding up the money tapers is a bit easier. So holding it against a breeze, getting a little yet less yardage out of it, which sometimes I absolutely want, believe it or not, but just to hold small greens, which I tend to play at a golf course that requires that a lot, I like where they're going. 
but then I don't want to sacrifice, I've already touched on, I want the high launch out these long irons and I want the flight. So absolutely great. Into the four iron, same setup as the three in the 770. But one call out I will make, if you go and buy clubs off the shelf, you're gonna have your three and your four a bit more upright. So we're talking lie angle, the toe is gonna to be a little bit closer to your nose, which means if you catch a bad one, it is gonna be likely to turn over. I've already said to you before in this, my miss is left. So I like to play clubs that are a little bit flatter. So when I come through, if I get a miss, certainly in these long clubs, it's going to drift left to right. It's not going to pull a miss left. Money taper, BBF and co in the ferrule. That was a big step for me, got to be honest. Putting a red line on there. I went Hogan inspired. Just about still getting my head around that. These are swing weighting at D two and a half. Swing weight is your balance point. Ideally, you want to get that. Video link here before you grip them. And I love them. I love the high launch from the 770. I love the spin rate with that TP5X golf ball. Then into the irons, the bulk of the set is going to be P7 MCs. You can see now they're not looking as new as they were a few weeks ago. New golf clubs is always a funny look. Always, uh, to me, you gotta get used to them. You gotta get used to the feel. You gotta get used to the shine. Now the new, new look has worn off. I've started to get a history of hitting some good golf shots with these. I'm starting to like them. Soles, I think, cut through fantastic. I have no complaints about how the soles go through the turf. Rib grips on all of those, so that reminder down the back. Now with one tape, all of them at a good length. If we talk 52 first, mill grind three has the raw face. Both of these on standard bounce. Swing weight wise, they are matching the set. Shaft wise, money taper in the 52. Great bit of information from Dave Anderson over at KBS as to why that happened. Full shots, I play full shots with this 52. If you then go 56 and 60, I've gone with the 610 wedge shaft from KBS. Feel initially on this, thicker in the right hand. The taper of this golf shaft for me, and I don't know if I'm right with this, it's a feel, but it didn't taper as quickly. When it comes to pitching, it doesn't overspin. Bringing this back into the equation, that is why I use it. So when it comes to my choices on the 56 and the 60, based on yardage, but also based on having a shaft that doesn't overspin it. And I would recommend this for that. Obviously, the black again looks mint, round grip. Why? Because I tend to hit, again, which I'll cover in that video, a lot of open bladed shots, sometimes closed blade, trying to leverage different parts of the bounce. And I went with standard bounce on the 56 and the 52, based here in Southern California. The grasses can be, sometimes you get not great lies that can be bare, but also there's kikuya, a lot of kikuya around here. And having the bounce just helps you play a shallow shot off of that. A set pitching wedge in the MC to a scoring or a bladed 52. Look at your yardage gaps, make sure you get them right. You may need to tweak the loft on your 52 to make sure that it matches the spin rates. Spin rates in these, and you can see this one's a good example, the hosels aren't really that much different length, but sometimes when you change into these scoring wedges, the hosel is longer, which gives you a bit more feel, pulls the CG a bit closer to the heel, but can change the spin rate. I'm not gonna experience that here. I've dialed in the distances, dialed in the yardages, got the same shafts, because I use pitching wedge and 52 for full shots, like I explained. So the same shafts in there is massive, but that's two rib grips, and then I switch to the round in the 56 and the 60. Let's talk about the 60. This is gonna be a full, rusty high toe with 10 degrees of bounce on it. Bounce is gonna be the angle between my two fingers and how much the degree of bounce comes in the middle. This one's got fall off camber on the heel, fall off camber on the toe. So when you play any variety of shots, it cuts through the turf exactly how you want it. Traps, you can open it up. There's still a bit of heel to help dig through the sand. Poor lies, you can go just out with the toe interaction, and then it has the high toe, which has more mass between my finger and thumb there. This high section pulls the CG up, which in turn brings ball flight down, adds spin, and then full face grooves 
As you can see, I'm maybe not using as much as I should, but full face grooves on there is going to allow you any shots you want to cut across or just play dead, as in no spin at all, get out there into the high toe. Plus, it's a big wedge. It's a big head. So you take your 56, which is more of a sleek looking golf club. You can even see from the angle you have there, that's more of a sleek looking head. And then you have this large footprint head. So if you're in a bad lie, size is gonna be your friend and that'll dig in and get you out of any trouble that you might have there. So that high toe, I've been a fan of this for a while, but I only play it in the 60. I did have a go at putting it in the 52 and 56, I actually have it over there waiting. Maybe I'll try them again later. Trotty Golf Tees, bang, Trotty Golf on there and the little logo in the top. Lengthwise, I do like the Kingdom Tee every now and again. Some of them are longer. I don't have a good example, but they would probably be that much longer in a Kingdom Tee, which allows you, if you play a high tee on certain shots, you can then hit the driver out of the top, which will give you with the twist face by hitting it right out the top, give you higher launch, low spin. And then I like to tee it low if I want to squeeze one, low launch, high spin. Spin rate then controlled to get me in the fairway or not. Pitch repairer, Royal Liverpool ball marker. Nikon 2012 Olympics, this was given to me at a tournament in Beijing by a caddy, I think at the time, who was caddying for Jamie Donaldson. Laser AS1000. This thing has been going since 2012 because it has a worn out Beijing Olympics logo right there. This thing is essential. You absolutely need this if you're not going to work on your Arcos or on your Sky Caddy or whatever product you have or on your GPS and your golf cart. You obviously want to have your laser to give you a yardage to the flag. Surface sunscreen. This is the mineral one. It's also the spray. Think about it. You're playing golf. You don't want to reapply your sunscreen. So the spray means that you absolutely don't have to get this on your hands. Good product. Northern Ball Markers pouch. Before we finish, the money maker. This has been a topic of conversation for me for a while. I am an absolute putter freak. I have lots and lots of putters. I love putters. I love the products. I love what they do. I love the spider. But I hate to say it, I've stuck on this one and I've got the stats to prove it. It's been beneficial to me. I'll put a video up there of how I came about to use this. It started in that video. I've changed the grip. It's on a win. I've had a couple of different grips on this, but I do like this win. Not too thick, really flat top on it, which I love. But underneath the Trotty Golf Dormy Onions, Blooming Onions head cover that just came out, I think there's still a couple of blades left if you want to snag one, is this Del Monte. It's an 80-20 insert, which is Dustin Johnson's favorite insert. I would imagine, I don't know the millimeter of this, but I think it's the three mil version. They made it in a three and a five. I think it's three the way it feels, the way it comes off. It's got a thicker golf shaft in it, so you do have to adjust to the feel of that. I've removed, and as you can see, shout out for anyone out there, you know it's a good club when there's lead tape on it. You know someone's put time in when there's lead tape on it. Two weights in the bottom. I noticed on a motion system I was using and a sensor that I was using that the toe, I know, look, there's only that much toe hang, but I noticed that the toe would pass the heel quite a bit. My mistake or error was over-releasing. So I added, there's, I think there's a 17 gram under there versus a five. So I removed two heavy weights, put a 17 in the toe, and then added a little bit of lead tape just to make it feel like it was mine. Results have been good. I think whenever you arm lock, there's almost five or six degrees of loft on this. I think it's at 70 lie, but obviously having the hands forward and arm locking, I've just seen so much benefit from holding the blade, holding the loft, being through various tests with wrist degree angles, being through tests on the monitor with speed, being through tests with face rotation and at metronome speed and how you're returning the ratio. And it, it, it's just been brilliant. It's been very good for me. Obviously, like all putters, it has its day where it misbehaves, which is almost why I left it out. But it is the only one that makes the lineup of what's in the bag. I have other putters that obviously keep a close eye on it, but rarely, rarely at the moment do I seem to change off it. So that's it. That's my 2023 what's in the bag. Hopefully in there, there's a lot of stuff you can learn and maybe apply 
to your own bags. Distance gapping is crucial. Golf ball that you're going to play should be based on everything. T height, essential for the shot you're going to hit. Sunscreen so you can stay out there and keep playing. Get yourself a decent range finder or use the GPSs that are available to you. They're clutch. Decide what you're going to go on grips. I don't change my grips in terms of model very often at all. I've used this now for over 15 years. Will I make a change? Maybe, but it's rare. Putters, when you get a grip on there that you like, stick with it. Have your go-to club that's your North Star when it comes to setting your swing weights. And then after that, go play. It's a time of year that you've got to be letting it flow, letting it go. I don't get too deep into it with golf shafts much. So when I do, it has to be the right change that I'm making and I back it all up with data. Nothing more I can say to you on it other than enjoy the process. There's a lot of clubs in these cupboards, like I said at the start. I could test them all, talk you through them all. But that is my squad of, if you noticed, 15 golf clubs with the hybrid that I'm using at the moment. Don't just have 14. If you're going to have a squad, make it a squad. You might have two putters. You might have a three and a five wood. You might put in the hybrid like I'm doing. All acceptable based on the golf course you play. Make sure you subscribe, make sure you follow. We'll be back to more tuition videos or equipment videos next week. Maybe something to do with the Open Championship. Enjoy Hoy Lake. It is a belter of a golf course. One of my favorites in the world. Enjoy the Open. That is your Tour Truck Tuesday video.